<laughs> really sorry, but I had to get that out. Hello to all the meeps and bubbles, we are finally back. I wasn't lazing around like our dupe right here, but as you may have already read, my PC broke down. So I had to order parts for a new one, build it, set it up again, and now I'm back to editing and recording videos. In this episode I want to take care of our energy problem. Our energy deficiency originates from us not having enough hatches, as well as burning through all of our reserves. At least now we get a small amount of power and water from our hot steam geyser. At the moment this is the only water that we use for oxygen production. So this episode is finally the time to use the energy from our magma biome that we have right here. If we would have been lucky we could have dug right through this spine here. But as you can see it doesn't go all the way down. We can start right away and create an entrance point for the magma biome. For such a project it is always a good idea to create a vacuum, so that the magma can't interfere with anything else. A vacuum can be achieved in many different ways, but this time we are just using pumps and a liquid lock to pump out all of the remaining oxygen. I think it is also a good idea to place down a few insulation tiles in case a little bit of the magma drops down. Meanwhile on the second planetoid it is time for a new duplicant. And this time we do have another patron. So Ted. Thank you for the support and welcome to the base. Our lovely Ted will of course get a nice bedroom to start with. He will also get a simple skill so he's useful for the base. After getting a prized head he is now a full member of Wade's planet. Whereas on the main planet I managed to make McLim very sad. Probably because of all the stress I'm putting the dupes through. And a potential solution for that is not giving the dupes less stress but to make their surroundings a little bit prettier. Meaning in our case I'm just going to spam a few pixel packs around our duplicant. So that at least their work environment is prettier to look at. Meanwhile a small sand delivery for Steku's Gooey Paradise. Speaking of weirdly named places I installed a mod that lets us rename our spacefarer modules as well as our planets. So this is exactly what I will be doing. First we had Steku's room and now Wade's planet. We got a dupes right violation right here. Let's call it free water. We have the main planet and Kyle's room right here. The lovely great hall. Hans Martin and David's room. The next one up is McLim and Skycloud. A little bit of me lies. Research rocket. Let's not forget the fungus. Space travel. Stay Coos room. Stay Coos great hall. And Stay Coos gaming station. And as you have seen in the background, power problems that make some of our duplicates very angry. I think Skycloud here is speaking for all of us. If you ask yourself why Seku is getting such a prioritized treatment, take a look at what he was able to achieve in the last 78 cycles. And not only that, we expanded downwards. And you know what happened. Seku tried to sacrifice himself to Poseidon. So in order to prevent that, we had to get him out of there. Luckily we did manage that, but it was a close call as you can see. A different method to create a vacuum would be to tile everything in and then delete the tiles. Depending on the size of the room you do that, it can be more or less efficient. In this case it clearly took way longer to tile everything in than to vacuum it out. The storage bin by the way is so we can collect up hot material and don't have to transport it through our liquid lock. That would be a mess. I wanted to show you different methods of getting through the magma. So here on the left side, the vanilla side, I had plans for a sweepy setup made out of steel that can sweep up all the dropping magma. The magma could then manually be placed by a dupe in a steam turbine setup to produce some energy. But I didn't manage to get to that point. By the way, here you can also see the reason for the storage bin. We don't want to transport that super hot material through our liquid log. After clearing through the rest of the abyssalite there would be enough space for our sweepy setup. If I would have gotten to that. Since holding their breath is not the most efficient way to build in a vacuum, I imported some atmo suits from the second planetoid. Now the dupes can start the dangerous task of digging through the magma right here. Or any other method that I might come up with. I skipped a little bit forward and let the duplicates dig as far as they could towards the magma. The reason for that is so we can start with our first exploit. For this exploit we will need need a conveyor loader, a little bit of energy, a few tiles of conveyor rail made out of steel, as well as some heat resistant steel metal tiles. The next thing that makes this easy and cheap is the meter valve, because it drastically reduces the amount of material and heat that we need to pull this off. Then you create pathways to every single one of our steel conveyor rail tiles. I did also notice that we probably need more than those 4 tiles. For now we can try 6 or 8 tiles. After hooking up all the pathways I set the meter valve to the smallest possible value. Which means that only the tiniest amounts of the material that we want to have in are sent through that. In our case organic matter or dirt because when heated organic matter turns into dirt and dirt turns into sand. After hooking up the reset and activation of the meter valve to a switch, dirt is sent in quick succession through the steel tiles. Heating up the dirt creating sand that can go nowhere but up. 
creating that beautiful sand column. A single column isn't stable at all and will be destroyed by the pressure of the magma. Hence we just reroute our conveyor rails and create a second one of those columns. I think now you might get where I'm going with this. You can also see me making a mistake in the background, deleting some magma, sadly. Always try to push the magma to the side instead of encapsuling it and destroying it. As you can see in the background I made the same mistake again, but this time I'm not destroying the magma. I will just wait a little bit for the column to crumble in on itself because of the pressure of the magma. Now let's try this again. The third time is the charm or however often I had to reload this for this to work. By the way I wanted to have at least six columns so that we can place down a ladder segment in the middle. Protected by some walls of course. Always remember, those sand structures are not very stable, so let's build this very quickly. Even though it might not be the best method to get through the magma, I thought I'd show you this exploit. By the way, in the background you can see how close of a call this was. The magma is breaking through the sand, spilling over and we just managed to finish that insulation tile. But even though a little bit of magma spilled over, that is why we had the insulation tiles down here. The magma leaking through the metal, one floor higher, wasn't intended though. So now we have some liquid copper here. Let us quickly tile that off so this won't happen again. Meanwhile enough time on the second planetoid has passed to cool down our new core base. And because we also have some energy problems there, I'm making room for solar panels. So this has to go. After removing the roof, we can place down the solar panels. The energy issues on the second planetoid also stem from us not having enough coal and cannot be solved by placing down two solar panels. We need way more than that. In our case, let's use the space and go with four solar panels. Those of course need to be hooked up to the power with a big heavy watt wire. Another useful tip, heavy watt wire can't be routed through walls directly, but it can be routed through solar panels, which in our case allows us to hook those heavy consumers directly into our solar panels, which I think is quite nice. In addition to that I rerouted our old cooling loop to go over the batteries so they stop heating up any further. The gaps in the liquid system will be filled with the fresh water that we got from our free water device in the last episode. Meanwhile we just barely managed to stop the magma from cooking our debris. You now may ask yourself why this ladder shaft and how is this going to help us with energy production. The short answer, I want to build a glitch pump steam turbine combination. Oh come on Kyle, seriously? Okay, let's quickly get him out of there. The glitch pump is my absolute favorite building. Sadly, we will need a buttload of steel for that. And for steel, we will need lime. And for lime, we will need fossil. So let's dig up a lot of fossil. Oh, and when I said we need a buttload of steel, that is only when you want to handle hot materials like magma. If you want to pump colder liquids, normal materials should do. And now go enjoy this dope's freaking out. The glitch pump will transport liquids the same way that we transported the sand before. What I mean is right through solid tiles. So as soon as the liquid arrives on top, we want to catch it. We do that with airflow tiles made out of steel, drywall made out of obsidian, and just for safety precautions, an insulation tile underneath. The goal of this is storing all of our magma in a single tile. The heat energy in this single tile can then be extracted with this diamond tempshift plate. The heat is then put into the diamond window tiles and this door can transfer the heat into the metal tiles to the right. The metal tiles can now be expanded to the right to spread the heat to all the areas underneath the steam turbines. The temperature control for the door comes from inside of the steam room. <laughs> But I still managed to screw something up. I totally forgot to set our critter feeder to not allow the super hot obsidian and the 800 degree igneous rock of course. And because I don't feel like dealing with that, I'm just deconstructing it and well, putting the dupes in a hospital. Come on dupes, please build those stretch cords. There you go. And who else could it be? It was Kyle again, but also David this time. Very good that Hans Martin is taking care of them. Remember that gases in space need a background, so we need a few drywall tiles here. Also two steam turbines are definitely not enough to handle the power supply of this base, so another one should do the trick. Future me here, it didn't do the trick. All of these steam turbines of course need cooling, so we need an aqua tuner setup. And while we're at it, why not include a few batteries inside of the steam room. 
The heat transfer for the steam turbines will be increased with a thin layer of liquid, hence the bottle emptier. I will just route the power with heavy watt wires and joint plates. We then need a long cable down to our base and this steel transformer will be used to power the door. And around 4 cycles later, the duplicants are still not finished. We didn't even have enough material for all 3 steam turbines. What we can do though is prepare the piping. A few radiant pipes behind the steam turbines and insulated pipes everywhere else. The water from the steam turbine will be refed into the steam room on the hottest tile, so far most to the left. For the automation I also want something simple. The steam turbines should only activate if the steam is above 125 degrees celsius as well as when the battery tells you that we need to fill it up. Speaking of batteries, here's another one. To fill this room with liquid, we set the bottle emptier to allow water. The water will drop on this hot metal tile, a lot of steam will form and probably condensate on this temp shift plate. I hope these two tiles will save us from eventual problems. I knew it, take a look at this water forming here and it is dripping down. Hopefully we didn't have... Okay, nice, no water down here, no steam. This would have been a nightmare to deal with. All the piping for the liquid loop has been built. Now we only need to fill it with polluted water. And for that I had the duplicants build a very long pipe. All through the magma biome, down to our base, to our infinite storages to get the polluted water. The water is now connected and can be transported. I quickly checked if there were any hot materials in our site. Let's disconnect the water for now. And then wait for the polluted water to fill our cooling loop. The cooling loop has been filled, now we can cut it right here. Of course I don't let the water stay in the pipe, I connect it up to an outlet, cut unnecessary connections and then I deconstruct this bridge here and build it the other way around. We now technically have a finished steam turbine setup. We can close this off, drop a little bit of water for thermal transfer and then let's not forget to close off our infinite magma storage. You see me placing a thermal sensor in there, made out of steel of course, which I could use to automatically stop the system from extracting heat from the magma so it will not turn into a solid. In order to transport all of that energy we need this heavy watt wire here. But just be aware that these few tiles are made out of steel. The rest can be any normal material. To get the magma up here we transported it through this spine right here. We only need solid tiles. Down here will be the main contraption made out of steel doors. We technically need at least 4 steel doors but with the kind of lag I'm experiencing right now we probably need 5 doors. So let's see how much material we do have left. It appears that we have enough for 5 doors which is nice. Then we can close off every tile that we don't need and connect up the doors to our power. The wires of course need to be made out of steel because the doors will have contact to magma and hence be very hot. Same goes for the automation wire. Needs to be made out of steel and connected to every door. But as you see we don't have enough steel. And while the dupes were building this I ordered a second planetoid to send over more steel. So now we have enough for our cable. After connecting up the automation cables it is time to give the doors a little bit of juice. For that I'm constructing a power transformer right here next to the heavy watt wire but outside of the vacuum. Connected with a tiny wire made out of any material to our glitch pump doors. Meanwhile I actually did manage to give a duplicant zombie spores, come on, and it even is the newest duplicant. The only thing I can do now is give them free time. Wait, let me check the triage cord. Nope, does not work. And for this thing we don't have the materials to make the cure. Well it seems like you have 10 days off Ted, enjoy it. Where did those freaking spores even come from? Let me check that. No spores here, oh, okay. Yeah. You can try to be careful, but sometimes you just screw up. It seems that the spores came in right here, so let's close this off. Back at the main base we can add the control automation for our glitch pump. We only need three things, a timer sensor, a switch and an end gate. Those automation parts can then be hooked up to our doors. So why the switch as well as the timer sensor? The switch allows us to turn the whole thing on and off so we can stop the doors from opening and closing all the time. This tile up here is where the magma should drop in. And I have the feeling that it is a good idea to control this as well. So I want to add another door which we need steel for again. Sadly we had other issues on the second planetoid which kept us from producing steel faster. My short term solution for that until I fixed the spawn setup is to just dump a lot of oxygen into the base. Since all of our atmosphere dogs periodically drop those oxygen bottles why not use them? I think the other planet might need a while until we get more steel so I'm deconstructing one door here to use it in the place that we prepared further up. 
Luckily, before I screwed up everything, I noticed that it might not be the best idea to build the door vertically. Better first close off the magma, then open the door for a short while, deconstruct our insulation tile and hope that we are quick enough to prevent any spills. Now close it off and we are hopefully done. By the way, the power for the doors comes from our McLim at the moment. Now to the timer sensor, you click on it, you set the green duration to 0.8 and the red duration to 0.8. So why those values? Anything that is faster might not push the magma at all and just leave the magma in the same spot and anything that is slower lets magma drip down all the way to the floor. This exact speed should allow us to push the magma up through any solid tiles without too much of it spilling downwards. Provided we don't have lag and we actually do have 5 doors which we do not. This also heavily depends on your game speed so I have this at speed 1. If we do not have lag this pump works at speed 1 and speed 2, seldom at speed 3 but never at speed 10. The magma then should be transported upwards through our spine to our infinite storage. Which it is not at the moment because something must be in those tiles which is not shown at the moment. So let me take care of this quickly and then this should work. Let's clean up all the mess. Here take a look at this, I have no clue what this was, but now it's gone. Another try, let's do this correctly. First close the door to be sure, then activate our glitch pump. Open the door again, the magma will drop down and the falling magma will be transported upwards. Of course it first needs to heat up the drywall as well as the temp shift plate but then the magma will form a liquid drop. I also forgot to open the door to the steam room, so we are extracting a lot of heat at the moment. We even pushed some heat into the diamond tiles. Let's check if some magma dropped down. Mm, only a little, but it drops on the steel, so let's collect that very fast. If we only had a little bit more steel, we could build that fifth door. And while I was saying that, we got enough steel to build the last door. Any excess magma that pulls up down here can now be sucked up with a pitcher pump. For now let's check how much magma we accumulated up here. Around 28 tons, nice. Which also probably means that it is finally time to activate the heat transfer. For that I will set the thermo sensor to above 200 degrees celsius. The temp shift plate pushes the heat from the magma into the diamond window tile. Then if the door is closed the heat is transported into the metal tiles underneath our steam turbines, slowly heating up the water and creating steam. I think now I can put in the settings of above 125 degrees celsius and 14 degrees. For the smart battery I will be putting in 90 and 70. Let's wait for the system to start up and then go check on the glitch pump again. For the magma we are at almost 61 tons, nice. And the glitch pump is working but a little bit of magma is dropping down. We also created a pocket right here. If we want to use up all the magma on the left side we need to dig up a few tiles and probably get rid of all this sand. Luckily we only need to remove one column, the other one will crumble in on itself. Just give it time. And we barely managed to get that in time. Oh yeah right, by the way the speed of the glitch pump is around 300 kg per second on regular speed. Now you can enjoy that little time lapse and ignore everything that you see up there, I will explain that later. I even needed to refill the magma pool as you can see. You may also notice the increasing magma pool under our glitch pump. Because every time the game saves there's lag and well if there's lag magma drops down. Hey that means we can finally get rid of our old coal energy. Now we have clean magma energy. And now to the things that you might have missed in the background. Even the three steam turbines wasn't enough to power the base so I tried to add two more. Which was kind of a pain in the butt because of all of the escaping steam and so on. But after we did that we hopefully have our power problems solved forever. Just one slight issue, because I wanted to use the 3 times speed I had to turn off our pump. But I did not turn off the energy, hence the door was closing and transferring the heat energy to our steam setup, solidifying the magma in the process. Should have known that in hindsight. This is not a big problem though, we just have to make the room bigger, add another drywall behind it, move the temp shift plate one tile upwards, fill it with magma again and then we can liquefy it. By the way, this is the exact reason why I integrated the thermo sensor, which I did not use. A little bit further down in the base I'm using another exploit to transport the magma back into the chamber that can refill our glitch pump. And I didn't mean the bottle emptiers with exploit, I'm talking about a pitcher pump that does not melt even though it touches the magma, which is a sneaky way of avoiding heat transfer, but very useful in our case here. 
to get even more magma into the transport area, a having a duplicate dig right through the abyssalite and all of the obsidian here. Which can be a dangerous job as always. So Hans Marty, could you just get out of the magma and save yourself? Just stop it. Okay, finally, and now go to the hospital. If I see that correctly, we did manage to liquefy our magma again. We now have 286 tons, as well as 110 tons of igneous rock. Which means we finally arrived at the goal at making the base more independent from coal energy. Now we are only dependent on magma energy, which of course is way less dangerous and harmful to the duplicate life. By the way, since I wanted to keep up the shoutouts, if you can even call it that, you may check out engineering and games for a few cool oxygen not included ideas, but only after leaving a like here and finishing the video to the end. Thank you all for watching, a special thanks to my patrons, and now if you want to you can check out the playlist on the screen.